how's it going? This is G. Today I'm going to show you a piece of art I've made for the 2020 Print Exchange. I'll be going through the whole process from my initial design through to final screen print. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. The 2020 Print Exchange was started in 2009 by Hotbed Press, a studio in Salford. The idea is for lots of printmakers from different studios to each create a small edition of 25 prints. So you end up with a large body of work by different artists using different print techniques. It's quite a cool project really. The 2020 part of the name incidentally is the size of the print, 20 by 20 centimetres. It just so happens to also be the year 2020 with all of the strangeness and difficulties that have come with it. I hope that's a typo. No actual hugging please, thank you. So with this project one of the things I wanted to do was avoid being too prescriptive about the image I was going to create. I wanted to sort of stumble upon the design a bit more organically. With a lot of my work, I often have a visual in my head that I'm essentially trying to recreate. And because I primarily work digitally, I can be very methodical in my process which is great for graphic design work and that sort of thing. But with my personal art practice, I'm trying to be a bit more relaxed about it, a bit more playful and spontaneous and just try things out. So that's what I was thinking going into this. Now, if I open up Photoshop, I can show you how that process went. I'm jumping ahead a little bit as I don't want to do a full Photoshop tutorial, but what I've made here are some very simple landscape shapes. Let's call them land shapes. Land shapes? Okay. I've added a bit of texture like that and a sort of backgroundy texture and it's perfectly fine, but not particularly exciting. So I was just staring at the screen, wondering, should I just scrap this and do something else? Or is there a way of taking this somewhere a bit more interesting? And I'm not sure why I did it, but I ended up um, duplicating the central square and I rotated it on the layer underneath like that. And I repeated that, duplicated that again. but I rotated it a little bit further, like that. And I honestly don't really know what I was doing, but it was exactly the sort of thing that I was hoping to naturally do, just basically play around until something grabbed my attention. So these new shapes here, definitely these little guys down here jumped out at me and I felt, ah, oh, this is interesting now. I kind of wanted to trim these edges here like that. So if we get rid of that, and then up here, get rid of that. And then the same down here, delete those. It makes this irregular frame around the edges which I just was quite drawn to. In fact I really like this here. Look if I zoom in a little bit. I just quite liked the way that this shape here potentially ran. So I decided uh, I kind of wanted that to run horizontally into there. I quite like that. And then to balance it out I decided I would do the same up there and I quite liked that. I added a few more elements, an additional little sort of planetary body there and a little dot down here. I really liked how that was balanced. 
if I click here you can see what I ended up with. I've added some more gradients in places and this sort of cloud up here and you can see that I've roughened the edges. Now at this point I have to really fight my desire to add more to this. I decide to say no it doesn't need anything else. This is the image. We will go with this. I don't know what it is but it's done. There's something about it I'm really enjoying actually. I like the feel of it like we're looking through a strange window perhaps it could be about how the year 2020 has felt with the sort of strangeness of the pandemic acting as like a frame for the view of the year or perhaps it isn't about that at all it could mean something completely different to you the abstract elements allow a viewer to make up their own mind and I like that but anyway I made it by way of a happy accident and that's what I'd hoped to do, so nice one. So the next step is for me to combine all the different elements and flatten them down into one colour separated file. You'll notice the colours have changed a little bit and that's basically because I picked ink that I'd used from previous print jobs that I had lots of left. I just wanted to make sure I was using up mold ink. You'll see I added some registration marks there and each of these separate layers gets put onto one larger sheet which we have here and I had this printed out on transparency that will allow me to make the screen stencils for each colour. The studio where I print is West Yorkshire Print Workshop in Murfield. They've been really, really good at making it a safe place to go and use the facilities. I felt quite excited about getting back into the studio to do some screen printing because it has been a little while. So let's see how it went. Once we're set up and everything's running smoothly, I print the full run of just the first colour. The noise you're hearing is the vacuum bed which is holding the paper in place. I'm able to control that with the foot pedal. I 
think it's great to be making something by hand and getting away from the computer screen. I find there's something really satisfying about getting into the flow of the process. The third colour completes our print. Something I enjoy doing is printing parts of the design on test sheets from older print jobs to make these one-of-a-kind mono prints. After tidying everything up, the printing is done and I head back to my studio at home. So that's my contribution to this year's print exchange. As well as the addition of 25, I ended up with a few extras which get marked as artist proofs. And I'm particularly pleased with the mono prints actually. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or drop me a line. And please check out the various links in the description below. 
I'm hoping to make videos a bit more regularly, so stay tuned for the next one. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and take care.